So this is a really good exercise to do at any time, any size. I've got a four square sheet of Arches Oil paper here, and I'm gonna do it on this sheet of paper. But um, I've also done really large paintings that I started in only black and white. And in one case, I ended with color kind of in the very final um, stages of that painting. So just keep in mind that it's always good to, to mix things up and just to go back to kind of going back to basics here where you're working just with black and white paint is a, a really good exercise because what you're gonna try and do is create something that's a very strong design and you're able to see your values very clearly. So I have a couple silicone tools here. I have my Messermeister. I have, here's like a little bit of a, a ceramics tool. It has the teeth on it. And I just like to have a few things available just depending on what I feel like doing and what develops in front of me. I've got some erasers here. Erasers are good for subtracting paint. You can go right into the wet paint. I've got various drawing things here. I've got, um, this is a graphic creedy, an art graph that has the square top. And here is one of my favorites is this 8046 Stabilo. It's aquarellable, gives a really nice dark line. A number two pencil. Uh, this is also a number two, but it's, as you can see, it's a lot thicker. Um, both of these I think are used by kids a lot, but I really like this thicker, thicker um, tip. And I've got a Conti, um, just a Conti pencil. It's a pastel. And I think this one's the same. This one is a really nice, uh, juicy art crayon made by Marabu, M-A-R-A-B-U. And um, I will show you that one as well. You can kind of just roll it up and it has a tip that um, extends out the bottom. So I will just leave that one handy. So how I get started with this, and actually all paintings, because I, um, I really love marks. Everything ha these are curvilinear lines, but then you, of course you can just you know, do something more rectilinear. So feel free to take a ruler and just make other kinds of marks that are not curvilinear. You can do anything that you want. Um, this is the play stage, and it's the, the stage where you really don't want to be thinking too hard. What haven't I done yet? I haven't done a dashed line. And, and maybe this line then just turns into something really um, curvilinear. Okay, so that's just the number two pencil. Here's my graphic Kaidi, and this has a thicker line, so let's just see what that's like. I'm using kind of the side of it here, and I don't... Um, I just like the, the different type of um, thickness of the point. And again, here's some of that weighted line. Not thinking. You kind of treat this whole thing like one. And then you might go really small like this. Just having fun. Pushing your creativity to think about things that you haven't done yet. You can do symbols. You can do letters. There's like a big A. And let's see, I'll switch over to this guy. I don't know, this has like a square um, end to it, so I don't know what I can do with that. Let's see, let's just experiment with all these different things that I, we have in our box. It's kind of fun to see what might happen. It's kind of a fun mark. Really push your tools that you have in a way that every time you use them, like try to think of a new way that you haven't use them before and then it just all goes into that memory bank of you know what these tools can do you can do a thick line you can do a thicker line like this it's kind of fun the pastel is going to be super dark see how dark that is it's kind of powdery I don't have anything that dark yet maybe i'll go over this line and make that a little darker Here's that really dark Marabou art crayon. It's very juicy. It's got a very juicy tip, so I don't have to press very hard. You can kind of see what it does. It's a lovely black. So things can get kind of crazy. Then I like to take my graphite powder. Almost always use graphite powder a little bit. 
I just use these little cotton, uh, or they're cosmetic puffs. Open a jar. And this is really the only type of powder I use, and I don't wear a mask with this one because I don't think I have to worry too much about this. Just kind of experimenting with a very amorphous, cloudy shape. It's treating all four of these windows as if they're one. It's one big painting. Not paying any attention to where the borders are. Okay, so I smeared that up really well. And usually I'll then just take some um, of my cold wax medium, just kind of put it on top again. I'm not going to worry about if it smears. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it, but it's going to pick up some of the graphite, some of the dry media, and it's going to turn that um, cold wax medium darker. But you can see I can put it on and then take it off again. And it just locks in the dry media what it's doing. Making everything kind of mid-tone, as you can see. It's not a lot of white paper left. So again, I pretty much start everything I do this way. It's just a fun way to get started. And it's a fun way to explore mark making and see if you can discover a mark that's different with the same tools that you have. I'm always on the lookout when I go to a thrift store to find something kind of unusual that might make a mark in the surface. Okay, there is that. Okay, so then I'll just save this cold wax medium that's gotten a little dark and I'll just put it right here, right back on the palette. I can still use it. There's nothing wrong with it. Set that aside. Now we're going to go into the paint. And we're just going to start adding uh, some of the paints that we mixed up. Some are dark, some are light. Again, this, this exercise is all about value and shape. We're just going to see how we can move things around. And I, I was already pretty mid-tone, but I'm just going to start adding in various places, dip into the different puddles. And I'm not, you know, mixing everything incessantly together. I just kind of want things to still have a little bit of their personality. So I might go into the light and go into an area over here. Add some lights. You can see how, how well those lights really stand out compared to the darker values. So just have fun with this. Again, you're still just playing. You're trying to find out what will happen, you know. You're trying to uh, sort of keep an eye on, you know, what's in front of you. Um, what do you respond to? What are the types of marks that you are starting to like as you do this whole process? Go back in with the Messermeister and just sort of move things around again. Now, when you put things on, again, you can take them off. So here it got kind of thick, but I can always take things off. And you know, I can introduce a pattern, for example. Why not, right? I can put it here really thin. And I can lift it. So it was kind of um, underneath all that paint, concealed, and I'm really smoothing that out. And then I could lift it again revealing all those marks underneath. And then I can do it again. I can conceal it again. Uh, I always think to myself, you know, adding and subtracting, adding and subtracting like that. like using these bigger tools because there's less control and I'm, it, it allows you to just be freer longer, not worrying about anything. So of course these paints are going to start mixing and creating other values, but that's fine. And draw back into it like this. It's kind of fun.
take the paint off and put it back on your palette. Use it later. So then some subtractive things. You can take other tools like this and just pull them through the paint. Make different marks. Maybe I'll change sides for this one. always tear newsprint and make a mask or you can lay it on a really wet area like this and just take a pencil and draw into it this will be a subtractive thing just drawing on top of the newsprint and it's going through that newsprint and lifting it's not going to transfer very well so I'm not going to do that but then you can go back into a line and make it a little darker you can go back in with your dry media at any time. So I like to do that a lot. And so many things get covered up along the way. And it really shows up because it feel, it's very different than what's already on there. Now I've got a lot of paint, it's really wet, and it feels very different than a line. <laughs> 